Is it just our imagination, or have the newsstands suddenly become discreet about the way they display magazines like Playboy and Penthouse and Hustler? Has the recent obscenity conviction of Larry Flint and his Hustler magazine thrown a scare into magazines featuring naked women? Well, Playboy and Penthouse, the two biggest, claim they are quality publications, different from Hustler, which by its own admission is outrageous. Nevertheless, Flint's 7 to 25 year sentence could make other magazines vulnerable to prosecution. Anyway, the whole affair has started the biggest national debate ever over the larger question. Does the government have the right to tell its citizens what they can publish and what they can read? And how much of a jump will it be from Hustler to anything that a local jury doesn't like in a news magazine or a book or a film? For now, the focus is on the so-called men's magazines. Playboy and Penthouse between them claim a total circulation of close to 12 million copies a month. And they are more than just magazines, they are multinational corporations. Well, we took a look at one of them, Penthouse, and its publisher, Bob Guccione. Penthouse is Bob Guccione, and even with his magazine's success, Guccione remains his own number one photographer, reserving the center folds for himself. The photography, that is. Guccione started Penthouse ten years ago in London, a shoestring challenge to Hugh Hefner's total control of the men's magazine market with Playboy. In those ten years, Guccione has more than matched Hefner. Penthouse was the first mass circulation magazine that showed full frontal nudity, something we do not propose to show here. And while it could never be mistaken for Hustler, it nevertheless is more sexually adventurous than Playboy. All rights are just motion picture rights. Well, motion Penthouse, too, has become a multinational organization. In spite of appearances, the chest load of silver and gold pendants, the mansion just off Fifth Avenue... Guccione is not your swinging, girly publisher. He's a tough-minded businessman who just dresses for the part. Guccione's associate publisher and close friend is Kathy Keaton, who also shepherds Penthouse's sister publication, Viva. So at this time, we're letting everybody in the industry know of the availability of the film rights. Penthouse has gone way beyond the publishing business. It's now negotiating some very expensive rights to make the movie of a book about Howard Hughes. Penthouse has already backed three films and has produced the first multi-million dollar X-rated epic, Gore Vidal's Caligula, which includes such talent as Sir John Gielgud. And there's the Penthouse Club in London, which includes a highly profitable casino. The magazine, though, is his main interest. And even though he boasts that his articles are so hard-hitting that he's currently defending himself in a $635 million libel suit, he does admit that what sells Penthouse is the centerfold, and that Penthouse now could be a target just like Hustler, a target for the Supreme Court ruling that allows a community to set its own standard of what is obscene. When the Supreme Court brought out the very unfavorable decision in 1973, I said nationally to every news agent and, and bookseller, magazine vendor in the United States, that in the, in the event of a bust, if anyone got busted anywhere for selling a copy of Penthouse, that we would come to their aid financially and legally. And we've had, since that decision and since that press conference, we've had something like 62 separate prosecutions mounted against us, not one of which succeeded, most of which were thrown out because of uh, lack of constitutionality. Okay, that was all before the before the Larry before Flint the thing. conviction. Uh, now you've got a uh, there's a solid precedent for the courts to go with. Well, know? there have been convictions in the meantime, but none of this magnitude. This appeared to me to be the vengeance of one um, hyper concerned uh, judge. I mean, this was a railroading of of Flint. This wasn't a proper hearing, it wasn't a proper trial. I, I think that the thing must be reversed on appeal, or certainly by the time they reach the Supreme Court of uh, the state. I take it then that you approve of what Larry Flint publishes? No, no, I don't approve of what he publishes. I don't like the sort of thing that he publishes. It's not my cup of tea. But then I have a right to say that. That's my right as an American, to say I don't like what the guy does. But I don't think that you can put a man in jail simply because you don't like what he does. There are enough other people who like what he does to make it, in my opinion, the public mandate that he should publish what he publishes. 
That's the familiar publisher's refrain, but in fact, aren't, what, you, what you're doing is hiding the most obscene smut behind the skirts of the First Amendment. Well, I, I also believe, and I must say this, I have no interest in, in obscenity and in smut in the true, hardcore sense of the word. It doesn't do anything for me personally. And I rather like the sort of thing that I do, because it's more, it has more mystery in it. It's something that I can think about. It arouses me cerebrally as well as physically. But there are a lot of people that require what you call hardcore smut for its therapeutic value. You know, that, that sort of guy is kept off the rooftops, kept from peeping in people's windows, from invading the privacy of other citizens, and kept from committing crimes of rape and other sex crimes. But nothing in the Constitution of the United States or the Constitution of any civilized government says anything goes. Polite, civilized societies do set limits. It might sound a bit odd coming from me that I do believe in censorship. There are ways of dealing with literature that's generally deemed to be offensive. The fact that areas of cities, large cities, certain areas could be set aside where these adult bookshops and, and uh, X-rated films could be played so that anyone who is likely to be offended by seeing this material in shop windows or even seeing it advertised would simply stay away from that area of town because it would hold nothing of interest to them. But I'm, not, I'm, I'm now talking about real hardcore porn. I'm not talking about the sort of magazine that I publish or even the sort of thing that Flint publishes, which, although I don't like it, is not hardcore. It is simply vulgar. Nevertheless, offensive. And people, and um, an awful lot of people would find what Penthouse publish, publishes offensive. Absolutely. But you see, taking the, taking the Supreme Court dictum of local community standards, what are, in fact, the local community standards? Well, what are they? If the biggest selling newsstand magazine in this area, that is to say Penthouse, if, if that isn't the community standard, then what is? How does one determine the community standard? Save by the greatest number of people buying a single product. That should establish in the minds of the, of the authorities that this is the standard, because the greatest number of people are buying it. But are you not concerned? I mean, here is Penthouse, love it or hate it, it's a well-produced, slick magazine that's full of, of ads from uh, prominent motor car companies, distilleries, tobacco companies. Aren't you concerned that if there is a groundswell following the, the Flint conviction, that these people might withdraw their lifeblood from... Well, we had a empire. reaction. We did have a reaction from advertisers. <clears throat> Immediately following the Flint conviction, we had phone calls from half a dozen advertisers or so saying, what did you think about it? Uh, what is, uh, what's happening? What's going on? Uh, how far is this thing going to progress? Because they are naturally concerned. Um, we said the same sort of thing that I'm saying to you now, that... Uh, Flint's publication is in a whole different area. He carries no advertising at all. So we're really talking about two different kinds of publication. That's like a more of a softcore publication as opposed to a hardcore publication. But it isn't really that Flint is, Flint is not sexually more explicit. Let me, let me point this out immediately. I don't think it's the sexual explicitness of Hustler, magazi Hustler magazine that upset the authorities. It was rather the other things that he does in there, the dismemberment and the excrement and the scatological scenes, which one does find offensive, and which one easily finds offensive, and which I find personally offensive, because I don't think that has anything to do with sex. I cannot see that nudity in any form can be offensive. What you're saying is that Larry Flint publishes trash and Bob Guccione publishes art. In so many words. If there were to be a definition between the two publications, it would have to be that, yes. But that still has nothing to do with, with censorship. There are a lot of people out there who, who are regarded as liberals and regard themselves as liberals and believe in the First Amendment as much as you do and as much as Larry Flint does, and who say, I'm prepared to go to the wall to defend the First Amendment and not have censorship in this country, but I don't think I'm going to go to the wall over... Over like genitals. This. Sure. Where do you draw the line? You see, the question is, well, the fact is that when Hitler began to burn books in Nazi Germany, he did not start by burning um, 
the important historic tomes of of our greatest writers who would think in ways contrary to his his opinion he began by by burning books like this these are the easiest books to burn these are the this is the foot in because it takes a very strong and courageous man to stand up in a jury and say uh, well i don't believe uh, uh, that this is obscene you know uh, this is okay by me it takes a courageous man to do that because everybody looks at him as he's some kind of a sickie yet in his heart he and the judge and the prosecutor the district attorney they probably all read the magazines themselves that's the hypocrisy of it but taking that argument uh, to a to the ultimate degree mm -hmm. and it's happened already there are magazines showing young children, yes. young children performing sex acts god knows what this an investigation going on right now in Washington yes. into that country. This I thoroughly disapprove of. How do you disapprove of it? How, what are you doing? What can you do to stop it? There will be and there must be some laws dealing with these things. And there are cases where a publisher does not deserve to be protected by the First Amendment any more than the guy who stands up and shouts fire in a theater. The man who uses children in, in, in pornographic pictures is a man shouting fire. This is a man who's taking license, who's abusing his freedom, who's taking the freedom to be absolute, and it cannot be absolute. Society must be structured, and for society to be, for society to be structured, it must have laws. That is the discipline. You also publish articles by well-known writers who no doubt you pay a lot of money to, but you say that the pictures is what, what sell, penthouse. Why bother with the articles? Well, really, for a very simple reason, Morley. If we were to publish only pictures in Penthouse, we wouldn't have anything like the sale that we now have. And by the same token, if we were to publish the good editorial that we publish in Penthouse only, exclusively, we wouldn't have the sale. It really requires a combination of the two. But sure, surely there's another calculated decision in publishing that kind of stuff here, in that... When you are hauled into court, or if you are hauled into court, there is your redeeming social value. Oh, yes. No question about it. No question about it. But that simply reflects the attitude of the publisher. Is he a responsible publisher, or is he not a responsible publisher? In the case of others who don't publish this kind of editorial, well, as in the case of Flint, for example, um, it was very difficult for him to defend his magazine. Uh, a lot of other magazines would have a hard time defending themselves because they don't have that sort of uh, redeeming social, political, artistic, and whatever uh, matter in their pages. But we do, very much so. We always have had. Long before it became a decision that to contain this kind of material would help us in any defense when we go to court. But I regard Penthouse as an entertainment medium first. I don't think, I'm not a missionary, I don't want anybody to believe that I'm trying to get across the point that I am a missionary, because I'm not. Penthouse I regard as an entertainment medium first. The fact that it may also be informative is, by the way, it is first an entertainment medium. What do you say to those people, particularly women, who say, sure, it's a slickly produced magazine, but the sole purpose of Penthouse and the other magazines is to demean women? We lord women, we uplift women. We make life seem impossible without them. They are the fullest possible partners that a man can have in any, in any uh, trip that he's in, whether it's his job or whatever. We were the first people in New York, for example, to, to help finance the Equal Rights Amendment, the very first uh, corporate group to come out and, and, and donate money to the Equal Rights Amendment was Penthouse, Viva. And I have more women working for me than I have men, more female executives working than I have male executives. The three highest paid people in my company on both sides of the Atlantic are women, not men. No one could say that, that the penthouse regards women as uh, playthings, as something you pull out on a Saturday night, enjoy it, and put back in a box until you're ready to take them out again. Bob, what's next, and pictorially in this magazine? Uh, people making love? You're gonna... We've done it. We've already done it. I think we've done everything. I don't think there's anything really left. Well, if it wasn't for the fact that we are all of us so damn dishonest about sex, 
we wouldn't have the guilt that we have about it. And if we didn't have the guilt that we have about it, we wouldn't have the problems that we do. But the the real, crimes that we do, the divorces, the dissolution of marriage. But in the very real world of the courts of this country, do you think that they're going to come down on Bob Guccione's side well, on this issue, or...? No, I don't think they'll come down on my side. I think they'll try to come down, I think they'll try to come out against me. But, I mean, I've got to be an honest man to the end. I have no intention of changing my policy. I shall go on as I've always been going. And if necessary, I'll fight for what I believe in, but I'll fight tooth and nail. I mean, I'll fight with everything I've got because I really do believe I'm a believer. In a moment, Jack Kilpatrick and Shane Alexander take a look at the question of pornography and freedom of the press.